Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my Monday segment, Craft Around the Clock, and on my Tinker's Card art page. So hello, hello, good morning. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. Are we all tired from Super Bowl last night? Um, it was quite a game, and I'm not really even a football fan, but um, my family is, and we had fun, but it was still a pretty cool game. Uh, so Anyways, good morning. We're going to have some fun painting with you this morning. And if you are watching me from my Tinker's Cart art page, welcome. And if you are from my Craft Around the Clock family, welcome. I'm going to pull up some uh, your comments here. So please say hello when you come in. I see you guys are popping in, and I love that. And I love to um, say hello, know where you're watching from, and what you like to paint or create or craft. Please just feel free to chat into the in the comment section. I love that. I'm taking. Um, I'm going to bring up the comments here so that I can see them. If I miss them, you guys know that I will answer the you in a little bit. So, there we go. I just want to get you guys up here. There. All right, Janet. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Hi, Lisa. Hi, guys. Thanks for popping in. <clears throat> my voice is maybe a little crackly. I had an event this weekend, and you might have seen it if you're on my page. Hi, Cindy from Webster. And Tanya, and Fatima, everybody, all my all my crews here. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. We're gonna have fun painting this morning. Um, I'm going to paint. You you've seen me paint a lot of little tin and in uh, silver plate items. I love to uh, just repurpose them. This one is an oil can and I have a little ocean scene painted on it and it's got little whales and narwhal and all the things. And this is a bigger piece that I did like a little bigger oil can. They're so much fun. These were in pretty tough shape. I just sprayed them with a primer first. Good morning, Mary Jane and Geraldine. Oh, from Alaska. Lois, thank you from Vermont. I knew that. Um, so, I find these little pieces, <clears throat> I spray them just with a primer that I get at the hardware store. Then I start, uh, sometimes I'll put a white base on them if I need to, but usually I'll just start in on my colors. Good morning, Robin. Thank you, Lois. It really helps you guys if you sprinkle this out. I'd love that. This was a little silver plate pieces, so it wasn't really rusty and that sort of thing. Again, I just spray painted it with a primer. And then I've just sketched a little design on it. And I thought what we would do is do a little design theme for St. Patrick's Day. I know we've done Valentine's and that's this week. And I see Easter everywhere, but you know what? Let's not forget about St. Patrick's Day. This is the girl that just retired last year from her Irish import store for over 25 years. So I have, um, I love all things Irish. So I'm gonna paint a little scene like you see on these other pieces but we're going to do it with a little Irish theme. We're gonna put a little Irish cottage on there and some of the really fun little uh, patchwork fields. When I paint these, thank you, Brenda. I usually paint all around. Tonight, tonight. today I'm gonna to paint on the front for you just so you can see the technique. And this is kind of tiny, so I brought the camera real close for you here. And, um, and I've got a little pencil sketch. <clears throat> I sometimes do, these little guys are painted straight on but I'm gonna show you a little technique that if you're a little concerned about all that detail, I'm gonna show you a little technique that I use with a Sharpie marker that makes it a little easier. I've sketched on my design and you can use a Sharpie or a paint marker. I'm thinking the Sharpie for this because it's a little thinner and my paint markers, my Poscas, which I love, are a little heavier line. I'm simply going to sketch in my little cottages and what it's going to be is a little bit like color book painting. So we're going to just kind of fill in the lines, cover the lines a little bit. That's fine. And then sometimes if I've lost my lines, I come back in the end and, and put them in a little bit here and there. I just painted a similar painting. I don't have it. Um, it was packed for my event this weekend. A similar painting that I uh, did with my members, my, my art membership members this month. And... Um, so I'm going to give a little sketch. That's going to be one of our Irish cottage. Geraldine, I haven't done them. Um, but yes, I would do them just with a primer first because it's such a slick surface that your paint just slips or slides around um, and it's hard to get coverage. So do just put a primer. It's a little bit rough. I like a little tooth to paint so my paint catches. If it's a little rough, I sometimes take a very fine, fine, fine sandpaper and very lightly give it a little go over with that. So these are just a couple little Irish cottages. I'm gonna sort of make them sitting on a little hill. I'm gonna make some, I wanna get something in the background where I can utilize that uh, 
patchwork look. So maybe we'll do the horizon line here. And honestly, this makes it a little easier for you. So if it's a uh, painting I'm doing in my classes, I would give you a tracer. You trace it on with your graphite paper, and then you would just go over with your Sharpie, and there you have it. It's going to make it a little easier for you to paint. Janet, no, I've never had a problem with the Sharpie lines bleeding. Um, just make sure any kind of marker, like when I'm doing sketching or whatever, I use a waterproof marker so that when I do a wash of watercolor, even on paper, it does not bleed. So I'm always careful about getting waterproof uh, markers and things. Hey, Deb, I know you're up next after me. Um, I can't wait to see what you do. I don't know if you guys watched Pat earlier. She just came off. She was painting a really cool owl. And stick around all day because if you're not a Craft Around the Clock member, um, join the page because there's live crafting and creating and painting every day during the week for you. Uh, every 45 minutes There's a new segment. So that's the thing is we have to paint a little quick, uh, but you're going to get the gist of this. I usually start top bottom just so I don't put my hand in things. And I'm going to get a little in-between size brush there. Let's see. What do we want? And I'm going to just do a blue sky with some quick little clouds. I'm going to make this simple. Um, if you want to see more in-depth things, you can pop over to YouTube. I have a lot of uh, tutorials there. I have some on my page. And if you scroll through my description I've put up, there is my private art community there. That I have a free and paid, but the free one you're welcome to join. And I have little short tutorials and videos for you there. So generally, I will paint um, with very few colors and mix and show and tell you as I go how I'm mixing. Welcome, Deb, first time or from South Dakota. Today, I'm putting out all the colors because um, it's little bits of colors and it's a little quicker to paint something like this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get, I'm just going to play with my blues and get, I like to have you see my palette sometimes a little bit too, but I know it's hard to get everything on screen. This is a small piece. I think it's an adorable little teapot. I just couldn't resist it. It was just at the uh, antique mall and it was really uh, inexpensive. So keep your eyes out uh, when you're out yard sailing or flea markets or anything like that. Because you're going to find all kinds of cool things. And it's hard sometimes to imagine what they would be. But if it's got a flat surface, or a surface at least, um, you can paint on it, right? So good morning, Cindy and Valerie. Thank you, guys. I, I try to paint and keep an eye and keep the chat going. So it's fun kind of like balancing all that. But I, uh, I love to see you uh, interact there in the comments and just say hello, if nothing else. And I'd love to know. I'd love to know where everybody's watching from. It's so fun for me. Charlotte, good morning. Yes. So my event this weekend was really cool. It was an art walk. I'm in Florida. It was over on Vero Beach at a property called uh, uh, Waldo Secret Garden. Waldo Sexton was one of the founders of Vero in the 20s and 30s. He had built uh, this cool inn that's Driftwood Inn is still in business today, a restaurant. And this is, was his private residence. So cool. So the art artists were all set up through the for, through the uh, property. Like some were out in the lawns. I was in a little porch tucked in. It was really a fun, fun weekend. I know I had a few of you pop in. It was so exciting. I love it. Acrylic, right, Geraldine? Thank you. Keeping you on track. Um, and Gail, good morning. Yes, I'm using acrylics. I sometimes try to force them to work like oil paints because I. I'm an oil painter and I like to blend a little. So can you see, I just now put on wet paint blue, put it on quick, still dry, still wet. I have time. I'm going to put on my clouds now while it's a little wet. So it sort of blends and it's not like a big bright white cloud. You've pasted on there. I sometimes take my brush and just put the little bit of white on the very corner of the brush with that white edge up. I am just making these little clouds. Now I have time to finesse them a little bit. It's wet so I can make like a vague little bit of a cloud in the distance. I can wipe off my brush and use the dry brush to blend. So if you're an oil painter and you're thinking about, oh, acrylics might be too tough. If you paint, get a little quicker, you can use a medium if you need to, but you have time to blend, which is nice. I've made this cloud kind of soft in the distance. If it, as this dries a little bit, I can take a little more white and just in a few places, just add a little bit of highlights. So it's really fun to play um, with the acrylics and just see what you can do with them. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Um, and Judy, I see you from Dublin, Ohio. One of my um, uh, fellow Irish shop owners has a store in Dublin. I'm not sure. Um, it's I've, I have had a long weekend, and I'm 
not going to think of the name of it, but I know she uh, has, a, has a shop there too. So uh, we would meet a lot of the different people from around the country in the organization I had for the Irish store owners. So it was kind of cool to meet people. And I know we had a store in Dublin there. Um, let's see. So little sky, that's all we need. You don't have to do much. Now, for the foreground, I'm going to do green. But I love the Irish fields in Ireland and truly are patchwork. If you've not been there, they truly are. If you're flying in, it's patchwork. So I'm going to just take a little flat brush and I'm going to just paint in little patches of color. Now, I know they're all shades of green, but I'm going to put in little patches of other colors too because I can. That's what's fun about painting. You do not have to be true to what exactly something looks like. You're the artist and you want to interpret what you see in an interesting and a fun way. If you want just a photograph of something, you can take a photograph. So I like to add colors where they don't belong, add a little whim touch of whimsy um, because I can and I enjoy that. So I'm just getting a little green since I had some on my brush there on my foreground. I'm going to use different shades just to carry over that patchwork kind of look. And I did, like I said, I took out like three or four shades of green. Ordinarily, I would just take some my phthalo green and some yellow and I would mix up all the shades, a little blue. You can get a little bit more of a turquoise look. But I was tired this morning. It was a long weekend and then a late anyway. I'm just putting out lots of little colors. So I'm going to take some of these other color green, and like I said, I'm going to add in some other colors too. So I just sort of patch them in like a quilt, like the patchwork quilt a little bit. And I'm just drying off my brush on my paper towel as I go. If I need to go into white or a lighter color, I'll rinse it. But I do like to just, um, if I'm going into a color I can, I can just pop into that color. And these are really little strokes, just little single strokes that are making little squares. And like I said, I'm going to go maybe with like a little pink here and there. I'm going to go with some turquoise. If I hit the lines, that's fine. I'm not trying to stay away from all the little um, Sharpie lines. I like to obscure them a little bit. And then if they are all gone, so be it. But if you want, I come in sometimes and just add a little more of the line work in. Okay, I'm rinsing because I'm going to go into some lighter colors now too. Geraldine, it was good. It was so cool. It was a lot of people. They were all very interested. They were loving all the art. There was a lot of fabulous artisans there and craftspeople, uh, food truck. We had um, was the coolest thing. And if you look on my page, you'll see pictures of this. Michael Love is one of the nephews of one of the original Highwaymen painters, the Florida Highwaymen painters. Um, he is Al Black, who is still out there and painting. He's in his 70s. Um, he's his nephew, and he was demoing that whole technique, and his paintings were so cool the way he did it. So it was a lot going on. It was really fun. Um, I hope they do it again. I really enjoyed it. It was originally scheduled for December, the weekend before Christmas, and we had some terrible weather down here, so it was canceled. So I'm so happy it got rescheduled. It was really fun. And so you can see the little patchwork is building up there. Oh, get over to my camera. Now I've done big paintings and you'll see them coming up now with Patty's Day coming. I'll be sharing them. And if you check on uh, YouTube, you'll see my big paintings of the Irish cottages. And I do these fields. And in the fields, I put little lines, dots, little decorations. It's really patchwork quilt-like. This is smaller. We're probably not going to go into all that detail. Uh, I might put little polka dots and things on some of them. But... Um, some purple here but take a look if you'd like to paint some irish cottages for patty's day i've got a lot of tutorials out there uh, with them painted so just a little fun it's almost confetti like looking and like i said you don't have to stay true to being green but if you wanted to do just green beautiful shades of green you could do that too hey pam good morning nadia good morning thank you guys for popping in i'm going to get a little more green in my field here and I know it's a teeny thing sometimes I need to go a little bigger but this I really wanted to paint and I thought before we jump in to our Easter things let's do some uh St. Patrick's Day it doesn't even have to be you don't have to be Irish right everybody's same is Irish in March so 
and I like to decorate for the hollow days. I don't go all out, but I like to have a little little mantle space. I just sort of change up with the seasons. And little uh, objects like this just thrown in there are pretty cool. Judy, this one is kind of easy because really that technique with the Sharpie does help you along. My Irish cottages, even though this is little, I still am going to start something when you're painting it white. I like to start with a darker color. Actually, most things I paint, I start darker color add the lighter shades and that gives you a nice value nice dimension so even something white you can't just paint it white unless you're going to put a wash later in of your shadows so i start dark so for my white stuccoed irish cottage i'm just going to take a little Payne's gray and white so i want kind of a little bit of a blue gray you can use a little bit of blue, tiny touch of black a little touch of blue and get a blue gray but i want to start with that so that i can work and have highlights so my pure white will be my highlights and I can leave a little shadow, say, under the roof line or something. So I'm just going to put that blue-gray in there. And look at how versatile this brush is I'm using. It's just a little flat. And I have found this brush lately, and I love it. it, it I got it at uh, Michael's. It's a, um, oh, I know the name of it, Lang Nickel. But I love that the tip is longer. So I get more paint on there, and I can go and do more strokes without having to reload. But I can get a wide line. I can get... A thin line by the chisel edge so i do love to teach you guys about you know brush handling and care for your brushes and what you what brushes you can use for what but i do like just limiting what i use i try to keep simple palette not today because i have a million colors but i like to show you what you need to get started without having to you know break the bank if you are just starting i've got some little uh Chim uh, I'm going to call them chimneys, but they're chimneys, right? <laughs> I'm losing uh, my thought process. So a little bit of a light gray. Paint's drying pretty quick on here, which is nice. So then we can just put our coat right on top. And I um, thank you guys. You guys are so kind. Thank you for all the kind words. Thanks for popping in on a Monday morning. What was everybody else's weekend like? What did you guys do? I'm always curious to hear what you have going on. I'm going to do a kind of a yellow ochre color for the little thatch on the roof. And these little cottages are so fun and you'll still see them in Ireland and they are so adorable. They usually have brightly colored painted doors, bright little window boxes with flowers in them. We'll put some sheep out front. I'm not gonna paint the doors yet or the windows cause I wanna kind of brush in some of that white to highlight it. And I don't wanna try to go around my bright doors but I will pick one of my colors from my little patchwork back there to use. Um, it's a little streaky here, so I might do a second coat. Acrylic paint is a little transparent. A lot of times you need multiple coats. It's not a big deal, but let the first coat dry well, and then put your second coat. Use thin coats rather than trying to put heavy paint on and get these ridges. You want to spread your paint out. Have a nice, smooth coat, and sometimes I leave the streaks. Sometimes that works for me for when I'm painting. So you just got to take it, each one and see how it all works out. And maybe another quick little coat in the front. I'm going to put my little sheep there. And I'll continue this around. I will continue like um, I might paint the handle a contrasting color. And, uh, you know, I'll probably like kind of go right around with the fields. And I will kind of paint around the little spout that way. The top is fun. You could put it as blue with the clouds. Um, or you could paint it a contrasting color with a little bit of brushwork or simply plain. It's um, It'll start as you go when you're developing your own designs and just doing things off the cuff like this. It's all experimenting, but it's really kind of a fun process. Uh, and I suggest try it because it's acrylic paint and you can paint over it if you don't like it. So I don't want you to be timid and not try things because... The only way you're going to find your style and what you like and and do that sort of thing is just to paint and not worry about, oh, I don't want to ruin this canvas or I don't want to ruin this paper. Just paint. And uh, if it's a surface and a canvas or a wood, you can paint over it. So that's uh, you don't want to be not experimenting. That's where you'll discover some fun, cool things. Alrighty, so if I don't see and I miss your question, I'll come back afterwards and answer it. If you have questions later, if you're watching the replay, for instance, and you have questions, put them in the comments. I watch them and or always message me too. I, I'm, I'm happy to have you give, send me a message. So I'm going to go into my white here 
And I kind of want to have a little bit of a shadow, even though it's a tiny cottage, under the roof line. So I'm going to start with my white down here. And sometimes I use kind of a dry brush technique. So I have the white paint on my brush, but I wipe some off so that I'm putting on just a light, light coat. And then I go back and I add more as I need to. So I want to see a little of that blue showing through. So you can see I'm kind of brushing that on fairly light. You can sort of see the blue through still. I'm going to do both of these little cottages at the same time, putting on some white, wiping it off. This one that was so tiny, I'm going to just paint the windows on there. But can you see I'm leaving a little bit of that blue gray under the roof line. I'm going to go a little heavier now. So I do it little by little. If I build it up little by little, that's the way to do it. Because if you go and put it too heavy of a big blob of paint, you kind of lose that, um, that look of the stucco. I'm going to build up pretty bright in the middle here, but I'd rather have you build it up a dry brush of just a little bit lighter. And that looks like it has some shading underneath the roof. Just, just white paint over your little blue gray. I'm just, I'm using a very light touch. I'm kind of just lightly, like you're putting on blush, I'm slightly sliding along the surface there. And I might come back later and think I need a little dab of bright white. I may not, but I'm going to leave that as it is. I am going to rinse my brush because I want to do the roof now. And so on the roof, I'm going to just, I've got the yellow ochre color. I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna on my, just the corner of my brush. Where's my camera there? And I'm just going to go across the top, kind of like we did in the clouds with the white just on the tip of the brush. I'm going to go across the top of that uh, thatched roof. And, I, and I'm just going to spread that out. I'm taking a little more of the burnt sienna, just going right across. I did dip my, water, my brush into the water a tiny bit so that that paint just flows in a little line. If it looks too harsh, I can just take the dry brush and soften it. So I'm making a darker line across the top, and I'm going to go lighter on the bottom edge of that. So same thing. I've cleaned my brush off. It's a little damp still. I'm taking a little white on the corner, and I'm going to lift it up so you can see me, because I know this is kind of a teeny project for you to see. I'm going to go right across here. See, it's kind of dragging and dry. I'm going to take a little water on my brush, pat the extra water off, and because that's still wet, I have time to blend that. Same over here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of light. And to get the texture, I still am going to add a little detail. To get the texture of the thatching on that roof. Oh, Charlotte, thank you. I went a little different with the sky this time, so thank you. I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and thin it down. Actually, I'm going to go with a lighter yellow to start. I usually like to go, like I said, dark to light, a couple of shades. That builds up value, and value in lights and darks give your flat objects dimension. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a liner brush, kind of, and I'm going to just make some little lines. This is just going to look like the thatch. And this is just a light yellow. It's not really noticeable, but I'm going to use it as my mid-tone, and then I'm going to get even lighter on top here and there. So I'm going to do that there. Starting at the bottom, like when you're painting fur or hair, I start at the bottom and work up so that it falls in the right uh, way and it doesn't uh, just looks a little more natural. So there it is. It's my second coat. I know it's hard to see, but it's there subtly. But now if I add some white to that same paint and I am adding little drops of water because the paint dries. And if you're doing fine detail work, when you get into trouble is where you if you thin the, thin the paint, uh, if you don't thin the paint down and it doesn't flow nice for you. So we'll just go and make some lighter strokes along there as well. And it just gives more of a look of a little thatch. So we'll just do this across. And can you see, even though it's tiny, I am curving to the left there, I'm getting a little straighter in the middle, curving to the right, just to give that shape. And again, like the stucco here. I evaluate it after a little while. The paint fades a little bit as it's drying. And if I have to, I go back in and I will make some lighter strokes. So I may even just pop in a little light now on that cottage. Just where the little highlights would be. 
And now I can paint my door and windows in. My windows, I just paint a little bit of a dark black, uh, dark bl black blue. So I'm just going to paint them in. And this is a little bigger brush, but I'll tell you, if you have a few sizes of uh, square brushes, I have some really teeny ones, and they're perfect to make little windows and doors with. So that's why sometimes I have a few little sizes of brushes, because I can pop in those little elements and not have to try to outline them with a detail brush and fill them in. I can just go in and just pop them in almost in one stroke. And I think I'll put some bright doors on these little cottages. I love teal. You know, you've seen me do so much in teal. We'll do one teal one and maybe one magenta or pinky one. So let's do this one teal. Just a little rectangle. It's all you need. It's tiny. And, 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 and I'm going to do this color here, I think. One stroke. I'm going to take, just because... Um, I'm taking a little white. I like to obscure the lines a little bit, and I know that's kind of a heavy line, so I might just soften that a little bit. And because my background of the cottage is a little bit blue-gray, and if I want to outline it, say it's the trim, I can take pure white and just go around, and it just is enough to make it look like it's like a molding or a casing around the window. So I do that, and... I go around the door the same way because sometimes those doors have a little bit of a, um, you know, a little, well, they would have like a casing around them. Even on the tiny one, you can go to as tiny a brush as you need. And before I put a little cross bar on the windows, I'm going to just lightly, light blue, just taking the same brush, a little light blue. Take most of it off, and I'm going to just do a little slash in the window that makes it look like maybe there's a little light inside, makes it look less like a black hole. And then I can go and just put some little cross hatches. Thank you for team. I, I, especially these Irish pieces, because I used to travel a circuit of Irish festivals around the country selling my paintings, and I'd be painting on site. I've got them down pat. So don't feel like, oh, it takes me too long. It's it's nothing. I'm hurrying along because we only have 45 minutes, and um, I want to always show you as much as I can. This little guy in the back doesn't even need the cross hatches. I'll just give it a little white highlight. So it's something that you can just, you, you'll pick up after a while, and you do get faster in, in when, as you can control your brush more. But it looks fast because I'm, I'm trying to go a little faster, and I will go back and maybe neaten things up that I may not have um, just the way I want it. And let's see the time. Speaking of time, so we've got a, a, a little bit, good bit still. I'm just cleaning up. I did have a little bit of my straw coming down too far. All righty. So I think I will take a fine um, Sharpie and outline my little fields in the back a bit. Hey, Deb. Good morning. Thanks to see. Nice to see you here. And let's see. I might just do just because it's a little confusing where these are, I'm going to go. Oops, I, I, my cam, my phone is the camera's over here, so I'm trying to keep it so you can see it. And it's just simple. I'm just going in. I'm not working carefully and doing every little square, square just so. I'm sort of just getting a rough idea of the division of them. Just to kind of separate the little bits a little bit. I even have a little bit of white showing through, and I may go back and put some color in there, or I may just leave them. I think it might just work. And if you guys have any suggestions of things you want to see me demo or you need help with, um, let me know, because I'm happy to uh, gear some of my segments to what you might like to see. And I am going to try to get better with my newsletters and letting you guys know what's going on. So if you are not on my email list, just send me a message with your address. I'm getting a newsletter together today to send out. And uh, I'm going to try to be better about that, doing it on Mondays, so you'll know what's going on with my week. And I do, like I said, like to do design work on them. I don't 
I should have dragged out some of my Irish cottage paintings if I have them here because you get to see the detail on the little fields. But I do still, even though they're little, I would do some of them because when you do honestly see them, you'll see lines in them, which is like the, the, the um, rows of what's growing or the way the fields have been planted or plowed. And so I just sometimes just use little dots, little stripes. If it's a big painting, I will get, get really put little heart shapes in some of them, make it more patchwork quilt like, which is fun. But I will just go in some and just do like little lines, you know, going in various directions. And you can use any shade that will show up. So I might go up with a light green uh, on top of dark green. Can you see that start getting those little patterns? It's kind of fun. And look at, I did, I used blues, I used different colors, so I might get a dark blue over here and maybe do a stripe. I might do some little yellow dots on top of that uh, mustardy colored. So I don't get as detailed with the little designs in these uh, sections, but I still put a little something in some of them just to make it a little more interesting. I can use the colors of the field, just mixing with a little white, for instance, and just put, you know, if it's dots or sometimes it's just stripes. And I just think that gives it just that little extra bit of detail. So I'm going to put some little designs in those before we get going. We have, um, we've got about 14 minutes left and I'm going to just, just to get the idea, so you can just get the idea, I'm just gonna put a few more little decorative touches in there. And I will go back later and add even more. You know what I did not do is put a little white on my stucco of my chimney, so just a little white there. Still see a little of that shading color through. While I'm at it, I'm gonna take white of my brush and I going to make some smoke coming out of those little chimneys. And I it's going to be a little lost on the patchwork part, but I like to kind of bring it up and kind of just do like little, little I, I, decorative. So I, everything is not as you see it. I love to add spirals and curlicues and um, like I said, hearts on shapes on the field. It's more illustrative, I guess. And I paint realistic, fairly realistic sometimes, too. It's not always just little whimsy things, but uh, I do enjoy it. Even when I'm plein air painting, which is more true to life, I still add my colors and my magentas and my fun little touches to those paintings as well. So this is just a little bit of a curly cue added on those little bits of smoke coming out of the windows. Okay, now I do like to put little flower boxes on. The cottages are looking a little plain, so I just put a little rectangle shape, say, under the window. If this was bigger and I had bigger cottages, I would be shading and highlighting more on them, but I think what we have on here is enough. And so for those little window boxes, I'll just take some shades of green. I'm just going to tap them on little dots, which will be my greenery kind of draping out of the window box. And then just little dots of color for flowers, even though they're so teeny, you hardly see it. But you can see my greenery is kind of draping over. You need a lighter or a brighter color maybe um, for a flower. And honestly, it's just a few little dots. And it looks a little like little flowers in a window box. I think the little back one we're not going to worry about. And believe it or not, I'm even going to put a tiny little doorknob on that door on the front cottage. Just a little tiny dot of my brush. Or you could use a toothpick or something. The fields in the front, let's see if we can, we've got 10 minutes to do a few sheep and a little path. So they need a little path first in front of the cottage. So maybe a light brown, just something a little lighter. I might go almost light. And it, I always do like kind of a squiggly little cool path because you don't want to come straight out at you. You want it to have a lead your eye into where your little cottages are. That needs to be even lighter there. And I will sometimes even put little shrubs in front with uh, just the little dots like I do um, 
there. But let's get some, I want to get some line work in the field so we have some place to put our little sheep. Yep, regular acrylic, Katie. And then I put um, an acrylic varnish over it. I just use the brush on. You can use a spray. I like the um, Minwax Polycryl. I use it on my canvases. I use it on my tin pieces especially. You can see on this little piece, it's got a nice little sheen to it. You can use a matte or a gloss. I kind of like a satin in, the, in between. All right, so a little bit of line work. Let's get that little, a little liner brush back out. And on a light field, I might go with a little darker green. Again, I'm adding a bit, good bit of water to my brush here so that I can do nice long stripes without having to reload. So we're just going to do some stripes on the field. Back there, this one is a little different direct, little different color. I'm going to get more of a blue green here, keeping it thin because that's where you get into trouble with trying to do thin lines and say, oh, you know what? I just can't get a fine line. I, I don't have the, I just can't do fine lines. Keep your paint super thin. I know I sound like a broken record sometimes about that, but keep your, pa your paint super thin. And look at how many lines I'm getting done here with just brush the paint that's on that liner brush because first of all the liner brush holds a lot of paint but because I have it thinned down it um it flows nicely those are a little big for that big that little field back there let's throw a few more in and make it just a little okay and then oh, we got one more over here let's do this one in a light green I'm using like kind of an apple green adding a little white to it And you can see how I'm making little lines, but I'm kind of making them at different angles just so it's not just making it more interesting, I guess. And now you can see I'm losing my lines, my my dark lines a little bit, which is what I want. I didn't want them to look color booked or outlined. If it's too much in a place, I might just, like I did earlier, I might just go and I just want to obscure them a little bit sometimes. And then there are times when I do come back afterwards and just add them in just here and there. I don't outline any more solid. I just take the, the marker and just kind of stop and start it and just make some little lines if I need to. I am going to leave the front bit a little plainer. I might just take a little bit of a, this is the color I used for it. I added a tiny bit of white and I might just scrub it in there like that so it just looks like grass in the field more than just I painted in a flat color. And then we're going to put some little sheep on there. And wait till you see how easy they are. On the back, I might put cows. We'll have to see. Uh, Mary Jane, welcome. And Pat, good morning. Thank you guys for popping in. I so appreciate it. Um, yeah, so some sheep. Same color I'm going to use as we did the stucco cottage, a blue gray. And that way I can pop on the white on top, almost like little dots on these guys to make them look um, like they have some shading. Hi, Pat. I loved your owl this morning. And thank you, guys. And I have some of my fellow um, Craft Around the Clock creators here. And please share in your um, business name, your page name, so we uh, you can get, um, you know, people could go and see what you're up to. So I'd love that. Okay. Blue gray again. I'm using Payne's gray, a little white. Again, if you don't have Payne's gray, just use white, a little black, a little blue. And they're really just going to be little blobs. And I know that it's it's not much contrast with that, but once we put the white on, they will. They're a little bigger in the front. They're a little smaller back here, but I'm still going to do them. And I do them basically two ways. A little bit of kind of more of an oval blob and sometimes more round, and that's like a facing sheep. Honestly, when I say blobs, they truly are little blobs just daubs, little daubs. That'll be like a little sheep facing us. The, the oval ones could be lying down or standing. And they almost form their little bodies by just blobbing on that paint. So we're going to put a little flock of sheep all around the front of the cottage here. And that's how we start. They're little blobs, really. And I'm glad it dries so fast because we're just going to go right into our white now. I'm using the paint a little thick this time because I want almost like a little texture if I can get it. And I'm just going to dabble dab on white on top. So just here and there, you can leave some of that blue showing through. And they're going to almost make their own shapes. So when, they, when we start to put little legs and heads on them, which are simply little black slashes, 
they'll just become little sheep. And I may even come back a third, a second time with the white as it dries. If it fades a little, I might come back and just put a few little dots, really like little dots to get that texture of that fluffy sheep um, on top. But for now, we'll just do this first coat of white, a little bit of the blue showing through. Really, they're little blobs. And let me just rinse my brush off. I'm going into black. And they simply get a little oval. Oops, let me do it in front of the camera more for you. It's just a little blob of oval of black. Like I said, the ones that are facing me get just a little head. This one can be looking to the side. I'm just giving them little faces. And as they go back, they're just tiny, but you still do a little black face. I'm going to get a little thinner now line, and I'm going to do some legs. You simply can just put, sometimes they have two legs. Sometimes they're lying down, and you can just do some little legs like that. They're facing you. Oh, you know what you could do is they could be running, you know, get the little legs like this. They're running around. And I also, honestly, these are teeny. You might, you might, you won't be painting this tiny probably. Sometimes I just have the two legs. Sometimes I can get four in there, but these are too small. Sometimes they're just little slashes because they're lying down. And then I know it's teeny, especially on this, but then maybe a couple little ears, like just little slashes. That's a huge ear. He's got big ears. We have four minutes, guys, and I think we're getting there. These guys, I could almost skip ears. And so now you see that I want a little bit brighter white in some places. Now I'll go back and just a blob here and there just to get them a little brighter. That's why I like to build up. Build up in little coats and to what you need rather than coming in and doing such a heavy white stroke that you've lost any shading you have. And we're going to get ready to wrap up now. We've got a, got a few minutes. So if they were a little bigger, you could do maybe like a little tail. But from a distance, there you go, a little flock of sheep. And what really just finishes it off nice is just take a dark green, almost like a wash, a lot of water on your brush. And we're just going to put a little shadow under them, and that sits them down. So it's just really a little wash. It'd have to be really dark blue maybe on that green one. But I just kind of put little shadows under them. This little guy's cute. He's, these guys are just jumping. And cows are kind of the same way, too. You know, you're going to just get a little rectangle shape because they're a box shape, a little head and short legs. And from a distance, I've got cows on the back of this one, actually. So see, it's um, how simple you could be. Little shapes, really. And I hope you guys have fun and kind of try because I'm trying to get better myself is looking at what is out there that can I paint on. It doesn't have to be a canvas always. A little shadow there. And we'll finesse it a little bit, but this, once it's got the finish on it and it's a little shinier boy it makes a, um, a difference so um, let me see if I missed anything yes Geraldine I certainly will I'll finish this up and post it of course I know I've painted these little scenes with you before Cam and but they are fun to sort of uh, if there's a holiday like I could do a little Valentine village or something I've done, I, I'm not going to get it because we're almost done, but I have an ice skate over here, an actual ice skate. I painted a winter scene with kids skating and sledding and whatnot. Um, so think about the different seasons, all the different holidays. And I just like to take this and I, like the oil can I have sitting in my bathroom, you know, sitting over there and this little guys, I just sit in little places. So it's not like in your face decorating, but it's kind of a nice little cool touch and you can change them out because of the season. So you don't have to, um, Think of where am I going to put it? I don't need any more little knickknacks and things. But uh, Patricia, yes. And I try to explain that it's really simple. You're painting flat. It's two-dimensional flat, but you want to look 3D. It really just the, look carefully if you're looking at a still life or something in life and look for your values and get your darks and get your lights. Look quick and do them because if you start examining it too much, you like break it down too much. But those lights and darks are what make your things look rounded. Um, Oh, Cam, the beach scenes aren't bad. And those people don't think of them as people um, because that's what throws even me off. I can't paint people. I don't do portraits. They're not people. They're shapes. I do a triangle for the body, two little sticks for legs, hang down a couple arms, a blob for a head. And that's a that's enough of a figure for a distance. Honestly, it works. So I, 
And then I do have that beach scene with the kids playing in the surf, which is a little more detailed, but I give you the tracer and I teach you step by step how to get them their little flesh colored faces. Um, and then just a couple of highlights and shadows for the features. You're not painting little lips. That's when you get in trouble. You start painting lips and eyelashes and all that when it's just a little bit of a figure in your painting and not a portrait. Um, it, Pat, you're right. It is. It is it's amazing. Um, and if you can really try to simplify, and what has helped me with that is on my plein air painting. I'm at 10 o'clock. You guys, stay tuned for Deb Splasher Paint. I'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Bye.